Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to the series where I go through different RPG products that I have and give them a quick flip through and review. In this one, it's going to be a lot shorter. Really just one issue, one, one PDF here that I'm going to be looking through, which is the Electrum Archive issue number two. I've had this for a while, but I just haven't gotten around to actually going through it in detail. It's so delightful. I love it. I've reviewed Archive 1 or Electrum Archive 1, issue 1. Um, I did it a while back, like a few, quite a few months ago now. Um, this is so good. This is such a good setting. It's such a good game. Uh, I'm really drawn into this. The art is just delightful. Brings you right into it. Um, highly recommend you guys check this out right away. I'll put a link below to where you can get it. But let's let's just click through it quickly. This is probably going to be a very short video because I'm just it's only 80 pages. I'm just going to click through it um, and uh, yeah, give you guys a sense of what's in here. But if you know anything about the Electrum Archive, it's heavily influenced by um, it's science fantasy. It's got Dune in there. It's just got lots and lots of really interesting ideas. It's an OSR. It's got its own game attached to it. Really interesting. I highly recommend you go check out my other review um, of the Electrum Archive issue one. This one focuses on Titan Port, which is one of the big cities uh, in, the, in the world. Uh, you get stuff on the front cover, which is great, rare trade goods, and you get a sense of what you're, you know, the kinds of things you're dealing with in this world just by looking at this. You get living metal, coral dust, salt seeds, fungal wood, nettle jelly, rules for haggling. Great. I love that. Um, table of contents here, which is all hyperlinked, which is great. <laughs> um, and then you get the, uh, the forward and then the world of Orn. Um, this is a similar um, breakdown that you got in the first volume. And gives you a, a brief description of what's going on here. Long ago, the people of Orn were brought here by a star-faring civilization of godlike creatures whose names are now long forgotten. They are known as the Elders. Um, gold and silver are an abundant in the soil of Orn and hold almost no value. The main currency is drops of Elder ink, which is how you, you vaporize it and inhale the vapor to cast spells. You can use it. It's like it, it's your currency. You everything is is. Um, Everything is counted in how many drops it is. There are bone spores, there are civilization merchant houses that fight amongst themselves. It's very Dune-like, seems to me. And here you get Titanport, seat of House Ker Onar, haven for those who venture forth into the Electrum Sea, the grand hub of trade on Orn. It's a great map of the city. I love that. You get the Titan right in the center there, covering his his face. You get High Town, Dune Side, the Umbral Bazaar, the Hollows, and Gem Haven. In, in just this this sort of map of the city reminds me of, um, well, actually, what it really reminds me of are those hex crawl boxes sets that they, that they came out with a little while ago. Um, I don't know if you guys saw those. Um, those, were, those were great. I have them. Or there's there's one box set. There's a couple bags of them. There's like the the bottled sea and the endless. Sands, I think, were the two, and then there was a sort of a box set which had a bunch of different types of tiles in it. The cities that they would include in those, the maps that they would include, would look like this. And I, I just very, very evocative. I love it. I really, really like maps like this. And again, you can just show this to your players and just point to where they want to go. Right? They don't have to like. It's not abstract. They can very, very easily see what the city is like. Love the art here. Love the art. Gives you a sense of what it's like to walk down the streets. You get districts and what's in those districts. Um, you know, the sights and sounds and smells. Uh, I love that. What's happening there in the morning, during the day, and at night. You get different locations that you're going to need to run into. High Town, the Hollows, same thing there. Uh, World Bazaar. And you get the factions that are present in the town. The Electrum Archive itself. Experimental inquiry into ink tech and magic magic and then you get a relationship benefit i love that um really really awesome that you get some benefits from becoming members of the faction and how to do it at the top there house care onar and again a relationship benefit there how do you join in and what you get if you become friendly with this faction super cool and of course you could expand those right you could expand those benefits if you if you wanted to really do so, but it gives you a direction to go for your players and how they're going to enter into it. How set true, how Velm, what they're like, the Golden Syndicate, the Dust Cloaks. I love that. The Embalmers, the Children of the Crimson Moon, the Followers of the Soul of Glass, the House of Delights. Then you get the Electrum Sea itself. The ever-shifting dunes of the Electrum Sea stretch out beyond Titanport, farther than the eye can see. Abandoned trading posts, ancient elderships, crumbling strongholds, and forgotten shrines all slumber beneath the sands, waiting to be uncovered and beset upon by swaths of 
ink seekers in search of fortune. I almost said innkeepers, <laughs> ink seekers. You how to gather food out there, sandstorms are like, because they're gonna be intense. Interludes, and uh, what those interludes might be, right? So uh, you may start with uh, an interlude. An interlude usually represents about a month of in-world time. So what happened during that interlude? Right? You get an interlude events, and you get basic downtime actions. You can do easy, challenging, or hard, how many successes you need during that time, and what the results will be. How to attune to a trophy, how to learn a talent, improving your attributes, crafting, building an institution, martial training, alter your disposition, gather information or someone else's disposition, carousing, creating a spirit prism, creating a puzzle box, using a spirit prism, and then there's rules for hirelings, specialists, henchmen, and companions. Uh, additional rules for NPC warlocks, which is spellcasters and how they work there. Hunting and foraging, hazard rules, they get an extra combat action there, how to repair items. Just this book has a bunch of extra stuff. The first one was like this. It just had a bunch of stuff for the system, for the game, putting it all together. This one is basically essential for that. Uh, warp gas and how that works, how it mutates you, and what, what can happen to your D4 and a D10. Glowing skin, face shifting, rapid metabolism, sleep spores, smoke stacks. Great. Drugs. Duration of each drug. The hangover and the tolerance that you can develop for it. Drug and the hangover effect. <laughs> what the price in, uh, in terms of uh, uh, drops is per, per dose. Flesh graft. If you want to add on extra stuff to yourself. Growing living flesh. You can add extra body parts. And what the difference is between... Um, well, how, oh, I see how, how many... The difference is between what you have now, I think. That's what it is. And then the surgery complication. Then character options. You get Vagabond options, Fixer options, and Warlock options. Those are the three classes, so to speak, from the first game, the player archetypes from the first one. You get backgrounds, the Assassin, the Courtesan, the Guild Artist, and the Pit Fighter. And then you get the Grafter's Tomb, which is a low-level dungeon crawl. And it's a great dungeon. As you can see, it's definitely interconnected. Uh, it's great visual map, couple entrances. Uh, I love maps like this with different levels and uh, different... You know, it's a great one. It's a really, really good one. Well, the hook is to get there, some random encounter tables. Um, you get the actual descriptions of the place. And the map's not repeated. I would have liked that, but that's fine. You have it. It's a very short dungeon, so you can flip back to it if you need to. And there's great art throughout. I love art that shows you what the players see in rooms in the dungeon. So, so good. Not just like generic art, but like this is what you see. Um, really cool. The trap the burial chamber, the vats, the heart, the, yeah, the heart room, the experiment room. Uh, experiment two. <laughs> There's different experiments in here. The shivers. And what a shiver is. Dog-sized, jittery, hairless rats with overgrown incisors and distended translucent craniums. It's like a combination of a dire rat and a... What do they call those? Mind rats? Brain rats? Whatever those things are. Um, appendix of Volca's belongings. Get the null blade. And then you get a, another kind of job or another kind of adventure, which is a heist. A low to mid-level heist. The Tower of Tursar Setru. You get the job. A woman named Myrna approaches the party with a job. Steal a void glass blade from the Tower of Tursar Setru, noted warlock, and twin brother of Rodal Setru, the House of Setru, patriarch. What's the context for the adventure? The various NPCs in the tower. I think that's great. Uh, the guards there. The tower map. Awesome uh, a tower map. And you get the grounds, you get the tower itself. You get the timetable, and that's, if you're going to do a heist, this is what you need, right? The timetable. The players will study this over time. They'll learn the timetable, where people are, how how it works, and you can slowly but surely fill this in, perhaps even, right? You just give them a blank version of the timetable, and then slowly but surely, in the different places, as they study it, you can put it in. I love that. And even if you don't need them, even if they're just doing the heist itself, you know where people will be, when they'll be. How security works, and again, they can find out about that. The rooms, pace, exploration terms, and the alarm. The different locations, and a breakdown of what's in there. Goes all the way through the puzzle floor. You've got to have a good puzzle before the vault. And then angles. There are potential angles players can explore when planning the heist. This is by no means exhaustive, so you should reward clever planning. But keep in mind the player should never learn the whole picture without incurring cost, whether that be time, money, or obligation. So watching the tower is one way they can get in. Interrogating and bribing the staff. The Lost Sun. Godot's map. The Travels of Orthox the Shrewd. The Dinner. 
uh, all of these different things that get them in, get them more information. You could role play, and this could be a whole campaign or a whole set of adventures. I think that's awesome. And then what happens afterwards <laughs> with House oh, Care Onar, the Golden Syndicate, and House Cetra? And of course, you get some handouts for the players, right? So they can get handouts. Uh, the note, 086, the puzzle floor, you can show it to them so they can figure it out themselves. And then the memo, you can give them that. Uh, excerpt from the travels, uh, the Tercer's documents. Tons of great stuff. You get inspirations in the back, all the different, uh, yeah, inspirations that come from this game came from. Uh, a lot of really good ones. Azag in the Shifting City, the Thousand Thousand Islands, Blades in the Dark, uh, Break, Cairn, Aaron, Fever, Dreaming, Marlinko, and Weird and Wild, Kidnap the Archpriest, Mouse Ritter, Maze Rats. <laughs> Just on and on of great games. Tons of good blogs, great video games, books, and movies that influence this. Alien, Berserk, Die Dark, uh, Dune, Kill Six Billion Demons, Malazan, Book of the Fallen, Nausicaa, Valley of the Wind. I definitely see the inspiration there from Nausicaa. Uh, Roadside Picnic, The Book of New Sun, and Dying Earth as well. Definitely Dying Earth and Dune. I, I feel those the most, I think. And you get a random location uh, generator, and then the back page of the book. This is fantastic. A really great uh, little product. Um, I highly recommend you guys get both this and the first issue. Put them together. <clears throat> it's a great world. It's a great setting for inspiration. Lots of awesome tables. Lots of great um, ideas. But really just also a fantastic system. You can run your game straight up using this. It's got really interesting mechanics, which, um, you know, in the first issue, and I go into those in the review, you guys check that out. I'll put a link, um, or I'll put a, a, you know, a clickable thing. <laughs> One of the uh, links to it will be at the end of this video. Anyway, I hope this has been interesting, guys. And I will see you all in another video.